welcome to Suzuka for the final round of the International Touring Car Championship. After 24 action-packed races, we've reached Japan for what promises to be a fitting climax to a truly superb championship. The ever-consistent Manuel Reuter is already crowned ITC champion. This is how he took the title, overtaking Alessandro Nanini for fourth place in Brazil. Here in Japan, Christian Danner is the surprise pole position qualifier for Alfa Romeo, with Bernd Schneider, last year's champion, alongside and hoping to clinch second place in this year's title race. Even here in Japan, there are Mercedes-Benz fans galore as the field come round for the rolling start for race one. Danner's Alfa and Schneider's Mercedes on the front row, Stefano Modena and Nicola Larini in Alfa Romeo's on row two, and two more Alphas, Fisichella and Nanini on the third row. As the lights go green, the race is on, and a tremendous start from Danner. Danner it is who leads, Schneider in second place with a horde of Alfa Romeos attacking him from behind. Danner leading into that long right-hander, Schneider under attack. Modena is third, Fisichella fourth, Nanini fifth, Larini sixth, then two Mercedes-Benzes, Maylander is seventh, Dario Franchitti in eighth place, and then another Mercedes, the white car of uh, Jan Magnussen in ninth place. The champion, Manuel Reuter, the leading Opel all the way down in tenth place as they come streaming through the curves at the back of the circuit, and still Christian Danner holding on to uh, this lead. It's the best we've seen out of Christian Danner throughout this year's ITC Championship and he's determined to consolidate this lead despite anything that Schneider can do. Down the hill into the sweeping right-hander, Dana, then the silver Mercedes of Schneider, then these four Alfa Romeos in pursuit, the rest of the field fanning out and there the battle between two of the Alphas, Stefano Modena in third place and Nanini goes wide, Nanini across the grass gets back onto the circuit again but his teammate marini has gone by and so has Dario Franchitti, so Franchitti's Mercedes splitting the two red and white Martini Alphas, there's Franchitti pursuing Nicola Larini now as uh, Alessandro Nanini gathers himself back together, we ride with him in a replay he goes off on the right, and that wall on the right, as he nearly gets the car back on the tarmac, then it goes off to the right again, and that wall is looming nearer at about 115 miles an hour, but fortunately he gets back on, and that's Oliver Gavin getting a punt from Hans Stuck. Hans Stuck hit Oliver Gavin there, but they're both still in the race. And at the front, it's still Christian Danner, but Bernd Schneider's second place is under tremendous pressure now from the Alphas of Modena and Fisichella. There's Danner leading into the chicane. Down the inside comes Stefano Modena, almost gets alongside, doesn't manage to make it. Now he tries the other side, and he is alongside Schneider as they go storming down towards the start-finish line. Fisichella is there too, but Modena seems to be going by. Schneider is fighting back, they're side by side. They're so close there as they're weaving down and coming on the other side is Fisichella and in all of that Fisichella is squeezing through on the inside it's still Bernd Schneider second but Stefano Modena's attack didn't come off and he's lost his third place to Giancarlo Fisichella still Mercedes second still Alphas third and fourth but now Giancarlo Fisichella our new third man fourth is Stefano Modena, Nicola Marini is fifth, then the Mercedes of Franchitti in sixth place, and Oliver Gavin getting his own back on Hans Stuck, and Stuck goes right across the front of Oliver Gavin, nearly takes it with him. Meanwhile, Dario Franchitti piling on the pressure on Nicola Marini, they're coming to the spoon curve, and Franchitti leaves his braking impossibly late, goes storming through on the inside, and is through. Dario Franchitti is now fifth, Nicola Marini pushed down to sixth, an incredibly uh, dramatic demonstration of just how good the Mercedes brakes are here because there are some tight corners, there's the chicane, there's the hairpin, there's the spoon curve and we see it again and Franchitti gets on the brakes impossibly late, runs into a tight early apex which allows him to squeeze through on the inside of Lorini. Meanwhile, his teammate Bernd Schneider in Mercedes number one is pushing the leader Christian Danner very hard. We've got the two silver Mercedes moving up and putting the pressure on the Alfa Romeos. Still Bernd Schneider second, still uh, Fisichella third, Stefano Modena fourth, but not for much longer because there goes Dario Franchitti doing it again. He does it at the hairpin, but Modena fights back. The two of them collide. They 
there was definite contact between those two cars there as they accelerate out of the hairpin. Dario Franchitti pushed back down to fifth place by Stefano Modena, but I think he's going to come up to attack now. This is the spoon curve again, that very late braking gets very close up behind Stefano Modena's car, but Modena was waiting for him. No, he wasn't, not at the second apex. Dario Franchitti goes through. And that is a demonstration, if demonstration were needed, how well these Mercedes are handling here, particularly under braking. That was the attack at the hairpin, but Modena, with a little bit of fiberglass flying, was able to get back at him. But now, the Mercedes is lining up another Alpha to attack. This is Giancarlo Fisichella, same place. He's going to try and do the same thing. Fisichella is out of reach. Fisichella tries to shut the door. The two of them touch. Fisichella is bumped wide. And this is Dario Franchitti in really aggressive mood. Franchitti elbows his way past another of these red Alphas. We see it once more with... Giancarlo Fisichella trying to get back to the apex to shut the door, but the Mercedes is already there, elbows him out of the way. There's contact at the front and the rear. The Alfa Romeo team in the pits are not happy about that, but Dario Franchitti is on an absolute flyer. We've now got the two Mercedes together, and Franchitti goes past his teammate, Bernd Schneider, waves Franchitti past, I would imagine, because it looked as though uh, Franchitti had no problem at all getting past teammate Bernd Schneider, and the flying Franchitti, driving the best race we've seen him drive this season, is already on the tail of the leader, Christian Danner. He's attacking him. That's a replay, and there you see that indeed Schneider did wave his teammate Franchitti by. This, meanwhile, is the best-placed Opel. This is Uwe Altsen attacking Nanini. Nanini getting a little bit in untidy there, and that's all Altsen needed. Altsen alongside with the weaving Nanini, trying to hold him off, but Uwe Altsen goes by into ninth place, and that could be significant for the uh, Constructors' Championship, because Opel don't need very many more points to clinch the title here in Japan. Meanwhile, at the front, still Christian Danner holding on to this lead with the two silver Mercedes filling his mirrors. Dario Franchitti attacks once more under braking. It's amazing how late he leaves his braking for the spoon curve. He's not close enough to Christian Danner yet, or is he? You never know with Dario today because he's driving so aggressively. That's Bernd Schneider's eye view of Franchitti ahead of him attacking race leader Christian Danner in the red Alfa Romeo as they come over the brow, under the bridge, down towards that flat arc left-hander and in they go with Franchitti looking at a way past they've got the chicane to come up there's one lap to go at the end of this one and as they come into the chicane Franchitti attacks bang bang the two cars locked together but he's through and Franchitti leads therefore and there is fury in the Alfa Romeo pit there's delight in the Mercedes pit Franchitti now moving away from Christian Danner Schneider still third, then the three alphas of Fisichella, Modena and Larini. This is the final lap of the first of our two ITC races here at Suzuka. And what a tremendous battle between the alphas and the Mercedes. Can Bert Schneider get past Christian Danner on this final lap and make it a Mercedes 1-2? He's certainly nibbling away at the back of Danner, but Danner is doing his best to hold that position and there are three more alphas waiting to pick up the pieces behind them. Up the hill, up that long left-hander, then towards the brow, and then they've got the braking for the hairpin to come, and that's where the Mercedes is so good. The four-wheel drive Alpha very quick out of the corners, the two-wheel drive Mercedes very quick into it, but I have a suspicion that Christian Danner, having been caught napping, by Dario Franchitti is going to make it very, very hard indeed on this final lap for Bernstein to get past. Look, he keeps a very tight close line. He goes slower around that left-hander, but keeps on the inside apex. It's not possible for Schneider to go all the way around the outside of him. And this is Danner quite sensibly and understandably driving very, very defensively indeed. You can see that Dario Franchitti has moved right away. They come into the breaking point for the spoon curve, and Franchitti is out of sight as Schneider attacks, tries to find the gap big enough. Danner isn't going to leave him one. They now accelerate away down through that last left-hand curve and down towards the chicane. That's where it went wrong for Danner just one lap ago. Franchitti leads the field. There is Danner in second place. Schneider third. Fisichella and Modena following in the other two red alphas. Down into the chicane now as into sight comes Franchitti. The checkered flag is waiting for Franchitti and they go neatly through the chicane, does the second place battle 
and it's going to be Dana in second place. The chequered flag waves for Dario Franchitti, his first ITC win of this year, the second of his career. Christian Dana is second, Schneider, Fisichella, Modena and Lorini follow, and there's Norbert Haag of Mercedes, absolutely delighted. And this was Bernd Schneider's view of that final attack by Dario Franchitti, the two cars colliding but keeping pointing in the right direction, and somehow Franchitti stays in front, and that was what won the race. There he is, Dario Franchitti, congratulated by Norbert Haug. Mercedes Alpha, Mercedes Alpha in race one at Suzuka. We'll be back with race two in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Suzuka for the final ITC race of 1996 and the final ITC race of all. Dario Franchitti on pole, Christian Downer alongside, but an incredible start on the left of the picture. The other silver Mercedes is that of Bert Schneider, and Schneider has the lead. It's Schneider from Franchitti, Mercedes 1 and 2. Christian Downer getting pushed to the outside line because Stefano Modern has come up into third place. Giancarlo Fisichella's Alpha is there, also in fourth. Christian Downer is fifth, then it's the Mercedes of Magnussen and Maylander, Alessandro Nanini down in eighth spot, but Mercedes one and two, the two silver arrows have made the break, then the trio of Alfa Romeos and Nanini down in eighth place will not be happy with that because he wants to be second in this championship and he's going to need a few more points to be sure of that. The three leaders running very closely and that is Nanini going past Maylander, so Alessandro Nanini moves past Bert Maylander, more points coming up for him, Maylander weaving about a little bit as we watch from the back of Nanini's car and the other red and white alpha, of course the car of Nicola Lorini, Nanini's teammate, as the leaders come into that first hairpin and Schneider going a little bit wide there, still Franchitti in second place, a hard charging Stefano Modena is third, Modena was saying after the first race that he wasn't happy with the way that uh, Dario Franchitti overtook him and he wants revenge, in fact it seems that the Alpha is going a little bit better than Franchitti's car at the moment, they're all very very close indeed as they go through the spoon curve and Modena definitely on the attack. Meanwhile, we're going to see the start. This is Bert Schneider making that fantastic start from the second row, out accelerating pole position man Franchitti and getting into the lead. And we see it from behind with there's Franchitti in car number two taking second place, absolutely surrounded by these ever present Alfa Romeos. Franchitti in number two. Bernd Schneider in number one, and they're one and two in the race, followed by the Alphas. There's Alessandro Nanini getting very out of shape, and he's just lost a place to Jan Magnussen in the white Mercedes, and he won't be at all unhappy about that. Remember, he needs these points to try and ensure that he will take second place in the championship. Magnussen has displaced Nanini, and Nanini is fighting to get back. And it once again seems, as we watch Nanini's view of Magnussen going by, that the Mercedes are really working well here on the slippery, fast curves of Suzuka, the scene of the Japanese Grand Prix just a month or so ago, and Nanini once more gets tight into Magnussen, almost goes it up his boot lid as they accelerate out of the hairpin, go on now towards the spoon curve, and Magnussen will drive for Stewart in Formula One next year, holding on and actually easing away from the Alfa Romeo as they go on now down towards the braking area of the spoon curve, and there once more you see how late the, uh, the uh, Mercedes can leave their braking, and the Alphas just can't quite seem to get close. But there are several more Alphas ahead of Jan Magnussen. It's still Mercedes 1 and 2, Stefano Modena, Giancarlo Fisichella, and Christian Dana, third, fourth, and fifth. Then it's Magnussen in sixth place, despite all that Nanini can do. And there, the yellow opal, that is Uwe Altsen pushing Bert Maylander, Altson the best placed Opal driver in the race, as they come very close into the chicane, he does push Bert Maylander, Bert Maylander spun round by Uwe Altson, comes to a smoking, steaming halt, there's a water leak at the front of that car, it looks as though his radiator is held, or there's a leaking or torn water pipe, and that must be the end of his race, he's beached actually, he's stuck over the curbs, Altson just clunked him in the side and the right-hand rear wheel and then caught the front of the car as he tried to avoid it. 
and there's a not very happy Bert Melander walking away from the last ITC race. And now look at this battle. This is the battle for second place. Number two, the Mercedes, is Dario Franchitti. Number nine, the Alpha, is Stefano Modena. No love lost between these two here in Japan today. And the tables seem to have been turned since race one because Franchitti now, so much on the attack in race one, is having to drive defensively. A little moment, a little slide from the Alpha there means that Modena had his hands full for a moment. That's given Franchitti a little bit of a breathing space. But Stefano Modena clearly able to catch Dario Franchitti. Bert Schneider has moved away in the lead and Franchitti has his hands full. Look how close Modena gets. Just getting the front wing right under the back of the Mercedes under braking for the hairpin. Almost pushing him out of the hairpin up the hill and then having that little sideways moment. Norbert Howe watching on the television screen hoping it's not going to end in tears as Schneider comes into the chicane. Franchitti second. Modena third. Fissi Keller in fourth place. Still Christian down a fifth, still Jan Magnussen holding on to that sixth place, but the real battle is this battle for second place as they cross the start-finish line. Dario Franchitti, the young Scot, Stefano Modena, the very experienced Italian. They come into the long right-hander at the end of the start-finish straight. Oh, he's off! Franchitti on the grass! Franchitti off and in the barriers, and the Mercedes tips over onto its side, rocks on its door. The car is steaming and the marshals are running towards the car and, and the door opens. Dario Franchitti is getting out. It looks as though Dario Franchitti is OK. Yes, Franchitti clambers out over the upturned Mercedes and he's clearly walking about. He's clearly OK. But we see it again. He got just a little wide on the braking for that long right-hander and the car was off the road in an instant. And once you're on that gravel, that's it. Look at the photographer. Run for his life. And it could have been so much worse. But Franchitti is all right. He's out of the race. And now we're back with that battle, which is now a battle for fifth place between Jan Magnussen in the white Mercedes and the two Martini Alphas with Alessandro Nannini attacking once more. Alessandro Nannini looking down the inside, has to get on the brakes. And the Mercedes moves away a little bit, shuts the door on the apex as Nannini tries to squeeze through on the inside two Alfa Romeos snapping at a Mercedes heels and two Alfa Romeos off the track Stefano Modena is off Christian Danner is off they were second and fourth it's now Bert Schneider leading from Fisichella Magnussen now third and we're watching the midfield battle among the Opals JJ Leto ninth Manuel Reuter is 10th, the new champion. Yannick Dalmas is 11th. This is Hans Schuck and Klaus Ludwig. Klaus Ludwig in the yellow car. Oh, and Stuck way off. Stuck goes wide, comes back onto the track, still in front of Ludwig. But that surely will allow Ludwig to get a run at them as they go over the brow, down towards the fast left-hander that follows. And indeed, Ludwig goes ahead of Hans Stuck. But all of the Opals, well done. That's Dario Franchitti back in the pits. He's clearly absolutely all right watching the race with Norbert Haug. Franchitti unhurt, but out of the race. Bert Schneider now leading by almost 11 seconds from Fisichella. Magnus the third. Then it's Nanini and Larini and Modena, because Modena has restarted. He's running in sixth place and indeed is moving up. Modena going just as quickly. Now he's back on the circuit as he was when he went off. But Bert Schneider comfortably out in front. Schneider won the first ever ITC race at the beginning of 1995. This, sadly, is the last ever ITC race at the end of 1996, and Schneider is leading it. That's JJ Leto off. Leto in that Opal battle goes off. Uwe Altsen goes by, and Manuel Reuter goes by. A lot of dust and gravel following Leto back onto the track, but he's still in the race. The Opal battle, though, appropriately enough, being led by the new champion, Manuel Reuter. Reuter is eighth, Uwe Altsen ninth, Leto a recovering tenth, as we watch the two Martini Alphas of Nanini and Larini, and that is a replay of Leto. You see, he left his braking late just where uh, Dario Franchitti went off, but with four-wheel drive on his Opal, he was able to drag himself through that gravel and get back onto the tarmac. Yannick Dalmas in 11th place, hounded by the yellow opal of Ludwig, Hans Stuck, 
uh, with an unusual black bit of bodywork at the bottom of the nose because he had some damage when he went off in the first race here. But the Opals having their own battle. And JJ Leto has repassed Uwe Altsen. Leto, despite that big off moment, clearly going as well as ever. But one Opal that isn't going well is Hans Schuchs. That's Hans Stuck retiring. He's going to open the front and have a look. Hans Stuck is out. Bernd Schneider is leading comfortably, but look at this battle for fourth place. Stefano Modena has passed Nicola Larini to become the meat in the Martini sandwich among this three-car Alfa Romeo battle. Still Nanini fourth, uh, Modena now fifth, Larini sixth, and Modena, I think, has been the class of the Alfa Romeo drivers here. He's got very close indeed. This is the final lap. He has a little look on the inside of Nanini's car, and they're both accelerating side by side up the hill, but Nanini hangs on with Franchitti out of the race. Nanini knows he's going to be third in the championship, whatever happens now, but he wants this fourth place. He's fighting to hold the aggressive Stefano Modena behind as they go through the spoon curve for the last time. Two identical Alfa Romeos, but Modena with his blood up, lunging up the inside, lunging up the outside, moving from side to side. Nicola Lorini behind has a grandstand view as they go into this fast, long left-hander. And meanwhile, Bernd Schneider takes the checkered flag the winner in the final itc race and still the alphas battle on and larini watches as nanini holds off modena or does he as they come out of the chicane modena goes by and just pips him modena gets fourth place but schneider is the winner and Franchitti on the podium as the winner of race one, spraying teammate Schneider with champagne. But in the points table, behind champion Reuter, Schneider is confirmed as runner-up. And that's it. Ironic that a series that has provided so much spectacularly close racing will not be run next year. So let's pay tribute to the drivers and cars by looking back on some of the memorable moments of the International Touring Car Championship. <laughs>